Hello. Um, this is uh, nothing to do with electronics and nothing to do with uh, microtransact. Uh, just more of my struggles with trying to parting off on the SC2 Chinese mini lathe. As always, I have to point out that I know virtually nothing about machining, therefore don't just follow what I do on the grounds that I know what I'm talking about, because I certainly don't. I just blunder around in, in the dark. I've made two modifications to the lathe since my last uh, failed efforts at parting off. One um, is to put shims under the uh, whatever the hell these things are which hold the uh, cross slide onto the base of the lathe. Put shims there, get rid of the uh, grub screws and tighten these hex bolts down properly. So that's pretty well eliminated any upward movement of the saddle here. What I've got here is a pile of different sized steel shim, different thickness steel shim, and I've just clamped on top of it the cast iron plate from the um, saddle of the SC2 lathe and I'm just trying to make three holes right the way through all that shim in line with the holes in, in this plate. Not particularly easy to do. And I'm going to cut it round here and hopefully end up with some different sized shims which fit exactly on that plate. Now I'm trying to saw it to the shape of the uh, plate. Right so now for the final cut along here and I've turned this plate the other way around because we don't want the shims to be as wide as the plate but only as wide as the bit where the bolts are. So now I'm going to try hacksawing it along here because I don't have a bandsaw. Right, well I've sawn through that so now to unbolt it and see whether we have some decent nicely shaped pieces of shim or whether it's all a disaster. Right, well I've ended up with one thou, two thou, three thou, four thou, five thou, eight thou and ten thou bits of shim which will fit on this cast iron plate. So now all I have to do is get the right combination to give me a nice firm saddle and the other thing I've done is followed uh, Steve Jordan's idea of putting in two screws here for locking the top slide Sorry. and the technique that I'm going to use today is to use the parting off tool upside down with the uh, lathe running backwards. I've just got a lump of aluminium here and I um, haven't got room to fit in a uh, rotating centre here so I've just jammed this thing in there to give it a little bit of support. Hopefully it won't get too hot. I'm not following my own advice that this point should be above this point uh, because that would move this cross slide, uh, top slide, too far to the right. So but there's about an inch. This is a this the tool is about an inch to the left of this uh, fulcrum point. Um, but we'll hope for the best. I've carefully centered it and um, tightened it down. So we'll see how that works. Right. This. Is, this uh, Rod is 28 millimeters in diameter. We got it in reverse. What else could possibly go wrong?
found this so far. In my experience, this thing always gets more difficult as you get towards the centre. Even if you... Oops. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Even if you compensate by increasing the rev. that. I bought this HSS parting off tool from Arc Euro. My, my thought was that it's only one and a half millimeters thick and therefore it w the workpiece will exert less force on this uh, than it would on a wider tool. But the disadvantage of it is that uh, the tool is the same thickness all the way along, including the cutting bit. So, when I was operating this upside down, like this, I think what happened is that as the workpiece rot rotated that way, and I was pressing the tool into the workpiece, eventually what happened is Maybe it flexed slightly. The slot it's, that it is cut is exactly the same thickness as the whole tool, and it started rubbing on this side here. And so it basically caught like that and then dragged the tool round, which is why we had that um, effect. This tool is another one I've got that might be better because. It is about 0.4 millimeters wider than the metal itself, um, than the shank of the tool, or whatever you like to call it. Um, so maybe I'll try that upside down. However, the problem with using this tool is that it will not fit in the any of the holders that I've got for the quick change tool post. So I put the old tool post on. And um, even if I pack it up so that it's right at the top rather than the bottom there, um, it's at about four millimeters below center. So what I'd have to do is shim the whole tool post up by four millimeters like that, which I don't uh, fancy doing at this point in time. What would be nice is if these quick change tool posts were available in a 19mm height, but I haven't found that. Well, I haven't got the shim to raise this tool post to have this tool upside down, but I thought whilst I've got everything here, I might as well try it the right way up and see what happens to that. So we're going forwards. With the top side locked, of course. rubbing against the side. I just have to keep feeding it at a reasonably aggressive speed. Uh, don't do that! Uh, 
tell me what's happening there. Don't see anything wrong with the bit at the moment. Let's just see if anything has shifted. Seems to be. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. I'm just going to keep try and keep feeding it at a constant rate. Put a little cutting fluid on this just for fun. Upside down one went. going to happen when this if it actually gets to the center should I try and catch it or what Clear some of this swarp. I can't see what I'm doing here. Probably see how far in we are. So far, so good. Is all I can say. Aluminium should be easy anyway. This is not a great achievement just to part off a piece of aluminium, is it? Now, should we just go on until it flies off, or what? Well, well, 
not at all, but uh, that much. It's quite warm. That's what the uh, other side of it looks like. Not too bad. So I started out with this HSS tool, which is um, 3.2 millimeters wide, the cutting part of it. And I thought, um, well, that's fine, but uh, maybe a narrower one would be better. So I bought this Arc Euro, also HSS tool, which is one and a half, yes, one and a half millimeters wide, but it's the same thickness all along and so caused the problem that I showed you. And then I also had this carbide insert, which is halfway between those two at uh, 2.4 millimeters wide, um, which seems to be quite good. But I'd say that these carbide inserts are very hard but not very sharp compared with HSS and uh, I reckon that you have to push them with more force into the workpiece to get them to cut which of course is not very so desirable on a machine that's uh, rather flimsy. So I'm still not completely happy. I think I should like something like this only smaller, only narrower. But we don't have that. So maybe uh, I'll try and find a narrower HSS tool or maybe I'll grind that one down um, and uh, also work out how to run the carbide insert upside down and also perhaps put in a saddle lock uh, which is the one bit of the lathe that I can't lock at the moment. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.